This is part two of our lesson on uh, graphing rational functions. This was a test, and uh, we are practicing all this good information. So picking up with number two, we're supposed to find all the asymptotes and holes for this function. If it doesn't have an asymptote or a hole, just write none. Um, so look, let's start with uh, the question of horizontal asymptote or slant asymptote. The horizontal asymptote depends on the degree. If the numerator degree is less than the denominator, then it's y equals zero for the asymptote. If the degrees are equal in the numerator and denominator, then the asymptote is y equals a over c, where a and c are the leading coefficients um, of the numerator and denominator. Um, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. And that's when we uh, wonder about slant asymptotes. So let's start from there. So um, looking at the degree, the degree of the numerator is higher than the denominator. So that means there will be no horizontal asymptote. Now it turns out, um, so well, yeah, let's go ahead and just write down none right there. So as far as slant asymptote, slant, slant asymptotes happen when the uh, numerator degree is exactly one more than the denominator, uh, unless the denominator divides evenly into the numerator. Um, and we'll, we would find that out anyway. Um, so it's looking like there'll be a slant asymptote. Uh, there, there very well might be a slant asymptote because the numerator degree is one higher, three versus two. Now, to, uh, to find the slant asymptote, uh, you divide. And uh, we have to use long division because it's x squared. If this had just been x minus 4, we could have used a synthetic division, but we can't. Um, so long division works like this. We focus on the first terms, so the x squared and the x to the third power. And we ask ourselves, x squared times what? will give me x to the third power. Well, that's x. And uh, you should line up your like terms. Um, once you have that, you do the distributive property with it. So x, no, uh, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Let's see. Yeah, so x times x squared is x to the third power. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And again, line it up with your like terms. Now we need to subtract by changing the signs. So this will become negative, this will become positive. Okay, combining like terms, these cancel. 5x squared comes down. Um, negative 1x and positive 4x makes positive 3x. And the negative 35 comes down. Okay, um, so then we start over. So we look at the x squared and now the 5x squared. And we ask ourselves the same question. OK, x squared times what will give me 5x squared? Clearly, that is 5. OK, and then I take that 5 and do the distributive property. All right, 5 times x squared is indeed 5x squared. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. All right, line up your like terms. Subtract by changing the signs. Okay, these cancel. 3x comes down. And this is going to be negative 15. Okay. Um, so the quotient is going to be... Um, oh, let me just write it down this way. So I've got x plus 5. And then uh, the remainder is plus 3x minus 15 over x squared minus 4. Okay, so that this is the uh, the quotient as far as dividing. Now um, it's only this pink part, all right? The quotient, not including the remainder, that gives us the slant asymptote. So the slant asymptote will be x plus 5. y equals x plus 5. OK, now 
it's important that this remainder is here. If there had been no remainder, then um, that would mean that uh, the denominator actually cancels out with a factor in the numerator, okay? Because it divides in evenly. And if that happens, um, then there won't be a slant asymptote. Uh, that means the entire graph is just a, uh, a straight line with a hole in it. So um, before you put down a slant asymptote, make sure you have a remainder. Otherwise, there is no slant asymptote. Okay, but this time we did. Now, um, nothing canceled out. Okay, nothing's canceling out. So that means um, there are no holes. Okay, holes happen when things cancel out. All right, and normally we, we see that by factoring the denominator. So um, let's definitely do that. If I factor the denominator, that would make this x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then, uh, you know, I would factor the numerator and uh, see, if, uh, see if x minus 2 canceled out. Um, but I can tell just by looking at it, you know, I see the four terms, you know, 35. The only uh, possible factors of 35 are, um, you know, other than 1, are 5 and 7 and 35. Okay, so I know 2 is not a factor of 35. So this is not going to uh, cancel out any factor up there. Okay, so no holes. Now, as far as the vertical asymptote, it comes from uh, setting the denominator equal to 0. So in other words, if uh, x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0, this is where vertical asymptotes come from. Subtracting 2 from both sides and adding 2. Okay, so I've got x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2. These are the vertical asymptotes. All right, make sure you put x equals in front of these. All right, so that is it for problem number two. Uh, we were not asked to graph it at this time. Okay, now let's take a look at problem number three. Okay, um, the slant asymptote can only happen if the top degree is one higher than the bottom. So um, that's not happening, so there is no slant asymptote. Now, what about horizontal asymptote? If the uh, numerator degree is less than the degree of the denominator, then it's automatically y equals 0 for the horizontal asymptote. And that's what's happening here. The numerator degree is 2, the denominator 3. Okay, so that's uh, numerator less, so y equals 0 for the horizontal asymptote. Okay, and uh, we said none for the slant asymptote. Okay, now let's talk about vertical asymptotes and holes. Okay, let's try to factor these and uh, see if anything will cancel out. Um, because uh, anything that looks like a vertical asymptote might actually be a hole if that factor cancels out. So you, you have to factor and see. Um, this numerator looks uh, factorable. Okay, uh, it has that quadratic look to it. So, um, you know, quadratic trinomials are very often factorable. So, um, x squared would only factor as x times x. 3 can only be 3 times 1. Inner plus outer has to equal middle. Alright. Um, inner, I have 3x. Outer, I have 1x. I'm trying to get a middle of 4x. Well, that'll happen naturally if I let both of these be positive. That'll make positive 4. That means both of these would be positive. Um, you always have to check and make sure you're getting the positive 3 right here. And sure we are. Positive times a positive is positive. So this is the correct factorization. Now the denominator, let's go for that. Well, first I see that we have a GCF going on. So I need to pull out that um, x that's common. That's going to leave behind x squared plus x minus 6. All right, now this is looking like something that might be factorable. 
okay because again I've got that quadratic trinomial um, let's definitely keep this X there though now again X squared can only factor as X times X 6 uh, could either be 2 times 3 or 1 times 6 okay now looking at the middle of 1 X I'm thinking 2 times 3 okay inner plus outer must equal middle inner I have 2x outer I have 3x I'm shooting for a middle of positive 1 so that means I need a negative 2 and a positive 3 together that'll make positive 1 so there's my negative 2 and there's my positive 3 um, we have to make sure we're getting negative 6 though um, negative times a positive is a negative so that's cool okay so this is the correct factorization now if nothing canceled then I would have three vertical asymptotes from setting these equal to zero so it would be zero positive two and negative three vertical asymptotes anything that cancels however will not be an asymptote but instead a whole so um, I do have a factor that cancels the x plus three alright so that's going to be a whole let me just emphasize that so there will be a hole um, at, and, you know, if I set that equal to zero, you know, so if I got x plus three equals zero, so subtracting three from both sides gives me x equals negative three. So there's going to be a hole at negative three comma something. Okay, now if I want to know what the y value is, and I do, I need to look at the rest of the function, okay? So um, the rest of the function is like this. You know, if I take out the x plus 3's, then what I have left is um, I've got x plus 1, all right, over x times x minus 2. So this is the rest of the function that survives. So um, I'm going to put this in my calculator and uh, see what's going on at negative 3. So I will consult my TI-30XS multi-view. Alright, I have x plus 1 over x times x minus 2. So let's hit the table function. Okay, let's go into fraction mode. And uh, I think it was x plus 1 over x times x minus 2. All right, I have a bad memory, so one more time. OK. And remember, I want to know what's happening at negative 3, an x value of negative 3. So as I hit Enter, it might help to start at negative 3. Whoops, I hit negative twice by mistake. OK, now let's just hit Enter few times. So at negative 3, I've got negative 2 fifteenths. Okay, so that's negative 2 fifteenths. So this is the hole. There's a hole in the graph right there. Okay, vertical asymptotes. All right, the two remaining factors in the denominator will give us vertical asymptotes. So if I set these equal to zero, I will get my vertical asymptotes. Okay, setting this equal to zero just immediately gives me x equals zero. Setting this equal to zero, I need to add two to both sides. So I get x equals 2. So x equals 0, x equals 2. All right, be sure to put the x equals in front of these and the y equals in front of this. OK, um, so that is it um, for number 3. 
Uh, guys, again, I apologize for the sound of my voice on this video. I am losing my voice uh, due to too much talking and not enough sleep. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. Um, we will pick up with number four on the next video where we will not only, uh, you know, give some asymptotes and things, but we'll actually do the graph for, for number four. So I will see you on the next video. Bye. That's my daughter, Maya. Love that kid.